Hello, my name is Behnam Prokhasemi. I'm a senior PhD student at the UCRI. I'm gonna discuss our paper that is published in Sigmatrix 21. In this work, we study and characterize the performance of third party ads. All right, before jumping into the paper, let's talk a little bit about online advertising. Online advertising and especially uh, display ads is not a new concept in web community. It's been around for many years. Even earlier websites have web ads. But web ads used to have a simple architecture. They are mainly include hypertext and images. However, today web ads are much more complicated and you can find them in the forms of uh, rotating banners, video, multimedia, pop-ups with excessive JavaScript and many more types. Besides complexity, web ads are proliferated on today's website. Website uh, might have tens of such web ads. There is also a huge difference on how ads are delivered and embedded on the publishers compared to past. Uh, there is a complex ad network on the server that delivers ads from advertiser to the publisher. Ad exchanges, media bidding platforms, trackers and ad syndications, um, different middleware are part of this ad network. As you would imagine from this introduction, there should be a plenty of concerns related to online advertising, essentially concerns related to security and privacy. Uh, there have been a significant number of studies on the topics of security and privacy, but beside that, ads have impact on the performance of websites. Uh, unfortunately, there is not much prior work that uh, demystify performance cost of web ads. Performance is important uh, because with the increasing trend in the display ads, websites will uh, take longer to load and render uh, their content and they become slower in responses. That will directly impact their business uh, revolve that website and reduce user satisfaction. In addition, because of advertising, websites need to fetch and uh, uh, download extra resources. So a user would experience increase in their data plan. And apart from network ads have an uh, impact on the com computation. The client side browser, for example, needs to allocate some CPU cycles to build and update DOM nodes and render uh, ad content which aggregates the computation and um, power consumption. And this is definitely important for mobile users that they have a limit on the power budget. So to have a better understanding on how ads contribute to the performance, we conducted this study. And in this research, we're gonna answer multiple key questions uh, that are interest of website builders, uh, web clients, and web researchers. Particularly in this study, we're gonna answer questions like how much ads increase uh, browser's page loading workload, or how, what type of uh, uh, web documents and browser activities contribute most to this extra workload. And there are, uh, what kind of sources web ads uh, come from and how, how do they, contribute to the performance cost. To answer previous performance related questions, uh, we need an appropriate tool. Prior research work developed um, tools for a study and analysis of page load performance. For example, cost plus that, um, that is published in Sigmetrix two years ago, with that you can apply what if analysis on the page load time and uh, detect performance bottleneck of websites. But the issue with this sort of uh, tools is that there are more like a general purpose tools and they cannot distinguish cost of ads from main content. On the other hand, we have a handful of studies devoted specifically to the performance analysis of ads. What is common between these studies is that they all use ad blockers to block ad and then uh, measure the overhead as an index for performance cost. Uh, there are some problem with this sort of studies. First, they are mainly focused on the network side and they usually ignore the computation uh, cost of ads. And because they block some resources, they are inherently uh, unable to break down the performance cost associated with those blocked resources. 
Another issue is that uh, the ad blockers it, it themselves have overhead. Uh, and this is because of excessive rule matching and their own tracking services. For example, in our evaluation on over 300 news websites, we find out that half of them has uh, over 32% uh, overhead on the page load time. Site breakage and uh, site dysfunctionality is another problem with ad blocking. For example, here, the layout and style of VMware.com breaks after content blocking. So any assessment on the broken website is definitely is not a valid measurement. Another issue uh, is that when websites incorporate anti-ad blocking responses that usually prevents normal page loading uh, process. For example, here you could see Forbes.com that when you use ad blocker on this website, it pops up a message that asks you to turn off a website instead of loading the website. Uh, having mentioned all these issues uh, that prevent accurate performance analysis and kind of limit the scope of analysis to a small set of websites, we came up with a new solution. And the idea behind our solution is to apply online measurements followed by an assessment that separate adds extra workloads from main content. However, the challenge is how to distinguish ad-related workloads from original content. For that purpose, we um, design and develop AdFerf, that is a framework for performance analysis of ads. AdFerf is originally designed and developed for Chrome browser because it's the most popular browser for both desktop users and mobile users. But the idea and design of AdPerf can easily extend to other browsers. Here in this figure, you can see the architecture of AdPerf, and it has uh, four main modules. The first module is um, a crawler that uh, uses the remote interfaces to connect to web browser and then crawls target website and record tra traces for internal browser activity and HTTP requests. In our measurement, we use a uh, Chrome traces that is originally used for profiling purposes. Uh, so it's capable of um, measuring fine grain browser activities with a small overhead, usually in the order of microsecond. Next, we have a parser that um, goes through recorded traces and keep only those that related to page loading activities and prone the rest. And then for each of the selected traces, it uh, extracts required information for performance characterization. Uh, information such as uh, start time, duration time of the activity, um, and if a URL associated with the activity, for example, if the activity directly operated on a web document like HTML parsing activities. Along with parser, we have a graph builder module that process the HTTP re responses and extract the child parent relation between web objects. It then generated dependency graph that is used for in the next module that is a resource mapper. The, the, what resource mapper does is that uh, it assigns each of the page loading activities to a web document and then use this resource dependency graph to match them with the associated URLs. Then with the help of a filter list, it uh, partition activities to ad related activities and non ad related activities. We currently use EasyList uh, for this partition because EasyList is the most popular filter rules um, that is used by a uh, majority of ad blockers. Finally, AdPerf uh, measures all the time it spends on ad-related activities as an index for performance cost of ads. Of course, there is more implementation details and uh, validation tests that we refer you to the original paper. Uh, we also released the source code of uh, AdPair for other researchers and for future extensions. Using AdPair, we conduct multiple experiments to assess performance cost of ads. We try different systems and configuration and network connections in our experiments. We use uh, two test corpuses. 
One is uh, 350 websites from um, Alexa top news websites. And the other is a 200 most popular website from general category of Alexa. For each of the websites in our test corpuses, we evaluate both landing page and post-click page. Now, let me share uh, with you our experiments and number of our key findings from this study. Uh, our first experiment is designed for computation to measure computation cost of web ads. This figure uh, presents the CDF of the computation cost of ads for both uh, news corpus and uh, general corpus. According to this, to this figure, half of the news website spend more than 15% of uh, page load time on displaying ads. And this is very important because it's spending 15% um cpu cycles on uh, ads is very important for the users who might not necessarily consent to receive those ads as you can see from the figure 20 percent of the news websites even spend more than 30 percent on uh, computation related to ads computation cost of a general website is it's uh, lower than the news website, it's around 5%, but it is uh, still considerable for end user. The figure also shows that different pages of, the, of a website might have different performance costs. For example, landing page of um, news sites spend 25% more time compared to the post-click pages for that news website. We then break down this cost by major uh, browser activities or uh, stages. They are, they are um, named uh, HTML parsing, styling, layout, uh, paint, composite, and uh, scripting. And we define three metrics for our evaluation. The first one is the ratio of the stage ad workload to stage total workload. This is an intra-stage metric metric and um, is shown with uh, green bars in the figure. Second one is the ratio of the um, stage ad workload to total ad workload. This is shown with blue bars in the figure. And last one is the ratio of a stage workload to the total workload. This is an inter-stage metric uh, that somehow indicates the weight of a stage in the page loading process. It is irrespective of ad. This is shown with the uh, red bars in the figure. Putting these uh, three metrics together will give you better understanding of computation cost breakdown. According to this figure, uh, scripting is the, is the stage with the most overhead and a salient spot for optimization because it contributes to 88% of the performance cost on the computation. However, you can immediately infer from the figure that, especially the red bar, that it, uh, scripting is already the bottleneck of page loading process. On the contrary, we have HTML parsing. That HTML parsing shows that it is a stage with a small contribution on the PLT, but uh, it has highest impact to the ads workload. Uh, we conducted almost similar experiment to measure the network cost of ads. In this figure, we showed the CDF of network uh, ads network cost for both general uh, corpus and news corpus. Based on this figure, uh, on average, about 15% uh, website spend uh, more on the network consumption due to online advertising. When did break down this network cost by um, content type, different content type, uh, we observed that um, around 90% of the uh, costs related to the network comes from JavaScript documents and images. We consider both a number of resources and download time uh, as a metrics related to the network cost. Also, we observed some dissimilarities between resources fetched by web ads compared to main content. For instance, um, XML files are more frequently used by advertisers rather than publishers. So it's a good ca candidate for lazy ad blocking by content type. Um, 
also we observed that 34% of total HTML files are ad related HTML files, by the, but they only contribute to 14 to 17% of the download time. This is uh, because ad HTML files are generally different than main HTML files. And the latter for that the latter one can contains 16 times more HTML tags. Now we zoom out and evaluate performance costs of ads considering the, their sources. So we are interested to find out where ads are come from and how, how they contribute to the performance costs in web ecosystem. So we use AdPerf and use dependency graph to relate network and computation performance cost of every ad element to their delivering domain. We did this for all the website and aggregate the cost for each domain. Based on our analysis, uh, two popular domains, that is DoubleClick and Google Tag Services, deliver 35% of ad resources. We also find out that um, contribution of ad domains um, uh, is not solely related to the number of websites that they are ser providing service to them. Um, for example, domains that have high reach might have relative uh, lower contribution. We observe those kind of domains. Those are cost performance domains. So what is good for publishers that to detect cost performance domains so they can consider switching their ad providers to those cost performance ad syndications. Another interesting finding is, uh, from our experiment is that half of the ad domains only appear on the dependency graph of one website. So this shows even popular websites trust on non-ad domains to include web ads on their websites. So we did, um, because of this uh, finding, we did another experiment. We did a trustworth trustworthiness uh, study on the ad domains. And we find out that domains uh, with poor level of trust, so usually untrusted ad domains, contribute to 37% of ad performance costs. And this is a red flag for the web community. However, uh, overall, we um, find that there is no strong correlation between the trustworthiness of an ad domain and the contribution to the performance cost. Finally, uh, we compared the cost of ads on website um, when they are loaded on mobile devices with desktop. Overall, we observed very similarity between them. For example, um, scripting is still the primary source of overhead and it contributes to 87% of the computation cost. And we find that again, double click and Google syndication were major uh, players in the computation cost. However, we find some dissimilarities. For example, ads have only 8% cost on network and computation, which is less than desktop version. We further investigated the reason, discovered that these dissimilarities is related to the structure of web ads. Overall, mobile ads have a, uh, a smaller number of ads and they are well optimized on the uh, mobile version. For example, you could see here that um, sky scrapper ads on the Deutsche News website are removed from mobile version and they are replaced with only one in-feed uh, banner. Also, delivery chain of mobile ads is not in, entirely the same as this stuff. And we observe a number of domains that um, they, were high, they have high reach, uh, but they, uh, they contribute to a small uh, contribution to the performance cost because they are only provide targeted and optimized ads for mobile versions. In summary, in this paper, we introduced a novel and more reliable mechanism for performance analysis of web ads. And we apply extensive and detailed uh, workload characterization for on over 550 popular websites, which it led to multiple interesting and first of a kind findings.